We are at the Wolf Law School on campus today where we're joined by Nan Jostin. Nan is an alum of our college. She studied chemical engineering here, and then she went on to study law at UC Berkeley Law School. Nan is currently the principal of Rapid Evolution LLC, which is a management consulting firm that specializes in professional leadership development and executive coaching. And we're going to get to learn a little bit more about all of that today. Nan, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, it's a treat. Thanks for having me. So we want to hear more about your career path. How did you decide you wanted to become an engineer? Well, I started out enjoying math and science and chemistry in high school, but I also loved writing. So it was a toss-up between journalism, which I thought would be really fun, and engineering, which my father, who was a mechanical engineer, thought would be really, really fun. <laughs> and so I wasn't sure which way I wanted to go, and he encouraged me, give engineering a try, and if you decide you don't really like it, you could always go do journalism, which he still thought was a bad idea. And, uh, and so I decided to give it a try. And why did you come to see you? I wanted to study engineering in the middle of a bigger atmosphere, a bigger environment, mm -hmm. and so I knew I wanted a place where I could be in a marching band, for example. I played the alto saxophone, and I thought, well, I want to go to college and be in the band. That would be fun. And I wanted to see if I was interested in being in a sorority. My mother had been in a sorority and had a lot of great stories about how, how wonderful her experience was. I couldn't find a place that I really liked. I was looking, and it seemed like, gosh, I was going to go to Northwestern. I didn't really like that. I was going to go to Washington University in St. Louis. I visited there. I didn't really like that. And a friend brought a brochure in to, to uh, advanced chemistry in high school and said, look, this place you would like, you like to ski, it looks kind of nice. And I was like, wow, how, I didn't think I'd go that far away to school, so I hadn't considered Colorado. My dad and I came out to visit, and I just fell in love with Boulder, and, and uh, that was that. We toured the engineering college, and, and it seemed like a great place, and I decided that this is where I'm going to start. And did you play the alto sax in the marching band here and join a sorority? I did. Of course I did. Um, I loved it. I, only, I was only in the band for one year. It took a lot of time and mm -hmm. had a lot of things going on, but... Yeah, I became a member of the Alpha Phi sorority, and there were a lot of engineers in the house, so I had great support from upperclassmen who were like, you know, you can do this and mm -hmm. hang in there and, mm -hmm. and made it work. So what was your first job out of college? You graduated with a chemical engineering degree, and then what? I started at Procter & Gamble in the Kansas City, uh, Kansas soap plant. So my first job was supervising a production team making all of the Ivory Dawn enjoyed dishwashing soap for the western half of the United States. And it sounded like from our conversation earlier before we started talking to the students that you maybe got an internship there beforehand. And how did that I, happen? <laughs> I was a summer engineer for P&G in Cincinnati, Ohio, which is their main headquarters. And that happened because I had gotten involved in growing leadership opportunities in the college and had become the president of the Society of Women Engineers. And so when the Alpha Phi House had professor dinner night where we were supposed to invite one of our professors, I didn't really know any of my professors well that semester, but I'd gotten to know the dean at the college, and so I invited Dean Mailer to come, thinking, of course, he would say no. Right. But at least I would have invited someone. Uh -huh. And he said, I'd be delighted. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And so he came, uh, along with uh, lots of other professors who were there that night, and he was asking me at dinner, what do you want to do for the summer? And I said, well, I'm really hoping to get into the Procter & Gamble manufacturing program. There's a lot of leadership training. I think mm -hmm. I would really like that. And he said, well, I just happen to know so-and-so in Cincinnati, and I'll call Vic and see if he can help get you an interview. So he called his friend, and um, they called me up and said they wanted to bring me in to interview me, and the rest is history. So it was a great, mm -hmm. a great networking story tied into student groups and all the things that I thought were great about being in Boulder and eventually led to your first job. Exactly. So the Cincinnati plant offered me a permanent position after that summer. So I came back the fall of my senior year and I had a job offer in hand. I was very wow. excited. After you were working with P&G in Kansas City, how did you end up in law school? P&G sent me out to Modesto, California where I became a paper engineer and was making diapers. Um, so I learned how to run hmm. production lines that made diapers. Eventually concluded um, that while that was fun and I enjoyed it, I was mm -hmm. ready for something new. I was working with a nonprofit group and I was very impressed with the board uh, president who was a real estate attorney. And I had a very bad image of lawyers. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, the daughter of an engineer, my father thought lawyers were bad and only caused trouble and didn't, <laughs> didn't build and grow things the way engineers do. Mm -hmm. And so I decided, well, I'll try law school. And if I really hate it, well, I don't have to keep doing it. Mm -hmm. I've got plenty of things to fall back on. Engineers are always in demand in one way or another. And finally, it was the connection of the strategic thinking, the analytical reasoning that I had enjoyed so much in engineering 
with the writing that I never got to do when I didn't become a journalist. Right. Um, and then I went on to a really fun career in law. What was that like? What did you do in the legal field? I started out, I thought I was going to do environmental law, hmm. tying into my chemi background. Sure. Um, but I, I joined a law firm in San Francisco when I graduated from Berkeley. And I um, was recruited to do a patent case, which I hadn't studied any patent law mm -hmm. in law school because, of course, I was going to be an environmental engineer or environmental attorney. And I love patent law. Hmm. And so one of the things that my engineering degree has done for me is that I know how to learn things. And so the fact that I didn't take a patent law class in law school didn't mean I couldn't pick up patent law. Clients really liked to have engineers on their cases. And so I handled a lot of disputes over patents and hmm. infringement allegations, defended clients um, who were accused of infringing all different kinds of technology, hmm. none of which I had studied um, in engineering school because, you know, first of all, technology moves on and so you have to right. keep learning new things. But I did, I did things like di digital audio compression, um, hmm. microprocessor manufacturing techniques. I ended up in a clean room in Japan doing expert testing and wow. you know and all those things I didn't study when I was here learning mm -hmm. chemical engineering principles but those basics and how to think and how to learn all came into play and mm -hmm. it was just a blast. What advice do you have for students who might be interested in leadership but don't really know how to get started in pursuing those kinds of opportunities when they're students here? Well I think you start small with just as with everything mm -hmm. and so you find a group an organization that you are interested in, whether it's the engineering student group or the group in your major. I did things with the um, AI Chemi group at the time. Mm -hmm. And I just started doing little things here and there. And I took on some responsibilities at the sorority house and um, learned a little bit with each you know, bigger step into the water and um, just kind of hit my stride. Mm -hmm. And there were people to encourage me and support me. And um, if I hadn't had those early opportunities, uh, I don't know that I would have been as successful in my career as I've been. I just always thought it looked like there were plenty of groups that had projects going on that needed help. And if I could do a little bit of that, plus it was more fun than calculus. And so I was like, well, I'll try that. So, so in your, your different parts of your career where you were a, uh, an engineer at Procter & Gamble and a lawyer and now an executive coach, what are some of the interesting and meaningful problems that you've been able to help solve? I think when I was in manufacturing, it was always about delivering a, a very high quality product to mm -hmm. consumers. The, it, the, the brand took off. It took off like crazy and suddenly they couldn't get enough. You know, the demand looked like it was going to be huge. Mm -hmm. How could we make enough surfactant to supply every part of the country so that the company made money, all the objectives were hit, mm -hmm. consumers were happy, the salespeople were happy? And the answer was, we're going to run such high quality surfactant out of the falling film reactor that we aren't going to need to store it in a tank before we ship it. We'll do online quality testing. We'll ship it directly, pump it directly into a rail car. It was an exciting strategy because it meant we didn't have to invest all of these hundreds of thousands of dollars, millions of dollars in more tanks. Mm -hmm. But if we ran crap into a rail car, now I've got a rail car full of bad product I can't use that would be very expensive to try to figure out. Mm -hmm. So it was risky. It was creative. It was highly successful. So I always had fun working with teams coming up with solving those kinds of problems. That's, so that's one example that mm -hmm. I look back on very fondly um, as being an engineer and being successful at it. We know that engineers often work on teams. Can you tell us a little bit more about some of the other people you've been able to collaborate with in your career? Well, more recently in my consulting career, I was brought in by um, Newmont Mining to work with one of the um, mine superintendents to help his leadership team become more effective. Hmm. And we worked on uh, the issues that, that hinder teams and what leadership looks like. And we looked at emotional intelligence and hmm. How do you build your emotional intelligence to be stronger in a very complex, difficult, um, hazardous setting mm -hmm. like mining can be mm -hmm. um, that requires engineers to be at their best and, and really work well with a lot of different people. And mm. so I've been able to collaborate with those kinds of folks. I do lots of work with corporate law firms, mm -hmm. um, young lawyers, young engineers uh, across the board. How do you use what you learned in college in your current role? Well. I don't use the, you know, the nuts and bolts of the Bernoulli effect or, or any equations, but I think I learned in college to be diligent, to be persistent, to try to be uh, collaborative. Mm -hmm. And so I do that regularly, every day. I think I recognize 
that everyone has something to contribute generally. And so the challenge is to figure out what that is and help people play to their strengths. Mm -hmm. What's the coolest thing you get to do in your job? I get to parachute in to different situations mm -hmm. all the time. And so I love to learn. I like to learn new things. And so as a lawyer, you'd bring, be brought in and you'd kind of go a mile deep, an inch wide on whatever the exact issue was. And so I like that about lawyering. I like that about consulting is mm -hmm. that I see different problems with different clients regularly. It satisfies my interest in a wide variety of work. Whereas I love my work at Procter & Gamble, but I was in the same department kind of doing the same thing mm -hmm. pretty regularly. And so um, some people that works really well for. And for me, I ended up finding out that I like a lot of variety. I don't get to see the outcomes always. Mm -hmm. And that's the downside. Or right. That's the trade-off. And so, um, but I'm good with that. Can you tell us about a time in your career when you weren't successful at something or maybe failed at something? Everybody has those experiences. One of my earliest ones was here at CU. Um, I, I, like probably most of the students, um, you know, I came in as a, 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 an A student out of high school, but it was a rural high school in Indiana, and I wasn't as well prepared as some of my classmates. And my second semester is when I started taking physics, which I knew I didn't like all that much. Mm -hmm. um, and I got a D on the test, and it was, it was just horrible. I had never gotten a D. I had never gotten a D in college. Um, it felt like a huge roadblock for me. Mm -hmm. And I called my parents and I told them that I'd gotten a D. And my father's reaction was, and he never got a D in his life. He was just one of those natural engineers kind of guy. And he's like, well, maybe, you know, you're not supposed to be an engineer. And I was like, holy cow. Wow, one D and I'm out. And it was really just awful. And um, so I thought, well, that that's probably not the answer. Maybe it is, but I shouldn't. Uh, you know, I'm not going to let that get in my way. And so I decided to go talk to my TA. And I was lucky that the TA was um, Professor Al Bartlett, who was an amazing CU professor. He's not with us anymore. But he loved students. He loved to teach. And mm -hmm. I happened to have a full professor as my physics TA. Mm -hmm. I said, look, I, you know, I don't know what happened. And he walked me through it and talked about it. And I asked him for advice on what I should do to try to get better at this. And I never became a rock star in physics. But I pulled it out, and I think I got a C, and I think I got a B the next semester. And I didn't let it stop me, but mm -hmm. for a while it could have. And I learned a lot from that. And mm -hmm. it was, first of all, don't give up easily. If you really think you want to be an engineer or be whatever it is you're looking to be, don't, you know, don't stop just because you have one hiccup, especially early on when you can fix it. Mm -hmm. My mistakes or my failures professionally have been more when my judgment was off. So not that I necessarily couldn't do something, but that I made a call that wasn't necessarily the right call. Mm -hmm. And um, what I've learned in those situations is as soon as I figure out that it's the wrong call or as soon as somebody's annoyed and tells me it's the wrong call, it's like recognize what happened, mm -hmm. own up to it, um, apologize where you know it didn't go right. Mm -hmm. I wasn't intending to cause whatever problem resulted from my mistake. Mm -hmm. um, and then just try to try to do better. And some people may not give you a second chance, but lots of other people will. And so, you know, go find those people and, and keep at it. Nan, what was your favorite experience as an engineering student here at CU? Well, that's so hard to answer. I have I had a lot of great experiences and it wasn't getting my grades back because I wasn't a top student. But I I made a lot of friends here and I remember most the teamwork and the support that we gave to one another. We had a terrible class my junior year where we got these homework sets that were due on Thursday morning and we got them I think a Monday or Tuesday and they were just brutal and we'd spend hours on them. But I remember all the hard work and, and trying to figure out what could we do, how could we go at this and, um, and that actually is one of my happy memories of, mm. of getting through it. And I, I thrive on challenge and accomplishment. That was a huge challenge and a huge accomplishment. Um, and then all the things that we did in the student groups were a lot of fun. Bringing in all the speakers, the alums that we did with the Society of Women Engineers was great. And um, But it's the people and those experiences that I remember the most. And maybe that's because I didn't practice engineering per se more than five years after I graduated. But um, you know, it wasn't a particular research project. or And I did a few of those. but. Um, it was all of the how we worked together and got mm -hmm. things done. That's, that's the, those are the things that sparked me. Mm. What do you wish someone would have told you when you were in college? 
relax a little bit. Don't worry quite so much. Um, I had a fairly tense, I think, first year because I was concerned about all these things. I didn't know anything about Boulder. I was 17 when I got here from Indiana and I was on my own and it's like, eh, you know, how, <laughs> how's this going to go? And I probably worried more than, than I needed to, especially mm -hmm. the thing with the physics test, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I let those things um, eat at me a little bit. If somebody had said to me, you know what, college is going to be challenging. It's going to be hard. And I mean, they did say it's going to be hard, but I didn't know what that really meant. Mm -hmm. And um, just hang in there, you know, keep a steady pace. It's all going to be fine. Um, I think I would have benefited a little bit from that. Mm -hmm. And especially with a dad who never, you know, struggled when he was going through right. school. It, he wasn't very, he, for all of his being an engineer, he wasn't very helpful when the rubber met the road and things went, ah. But I was lucky, you know, I had a good support group. My sorority sisters were fabulous. Um, I wish somebody had said use the tutors more, the tutoring programs, because I think that helped me a lot once I started um, taking advantage of some of that mm -hmm. and um, helped me catch up where I realized I was behind mm -hmm. because, you know, I just didn't have the same background as a lot of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and I wasn't unusual in that regard. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. Anything else you want to share with us? I think that my life is better because I came to see you and I became an engineer. I view it as my extreme good fortune that I found this place or that they found me with a brochure they sent to not even to me <laughs> and that I got so much support and opportunity for both the job at Procter & Gamble but just beyond that I think it's my good luck to be a, a CU buff and I had such a wonderful experience here that um, I hope everybody has that good fortune and meets the professors and gets the opportunities that, that I was able to have and that laid the foundation that got me eventually to a, a world-class law school and a career that I loved in San Francisco and now another great career that I'm enjoying. I think engineers are the best and we do so many different things in ways that help society mm -hmm. that you can't even picture. I could have never dreamed when I was a first year engineering student how great this was all going to turn out. And it just wasn't clear to me exactly where I would go with this, mm -hmm. but it seemed like it was worth doing. And I, it absolutely was. I loved it. And I wish everyone all the best. Thank you for all that you give back to CU and CU Engineering and for being with us today. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thanks.